Hi, welcome to series of lectures on electrical machines and this video lecture is on synchronous motor. So if you know about alternator, it is very simple to understand synchronous motor. And what you must additionally know about synchronous motor is why it is preferred to induction motor, what are its applications and what are its advantages, disadvantages and what is its principle of operation and what are the different starting methods to start the synchronous motor and its power equations and operation of synchronous motor when connected to infinite bus power under no load condition and loaded condition. So I suggest you to go first with alternator and then with synchronous motor. Even though if you prefer to go with synchronous motor first, then I will mention few important differences between synchronous motor and alternator so that it will be easier for you to understand synchronous motor. And apart from uploading a complete lecture video, I will also upload on topic wise so that it will be easier for you to go with that topic instead of searching for the topic in the entire video. And you can find all the lecture videos on alternator and all the lecture videos on synchronous motor in the playlist of my channel. So here are the contents of this video on synchronous motor. First, differences between alternator and synchronous motor. In this topic, the important differences between alternator and synchronous motor are discussed so that it will be easier for you to understand synchronous motor. And next, introduction. In this, you will discuss about why synchronous motor is preferred to induction motor, what are its applications, what are its advantages, disadvantages, and about its slip and top versus speed curve, and how to change the synchronous speed of synchronous motor will be discussed in this topic. Next, why synchronous motor is not a self-starting motor will be discussed in this topic and what are the different starting methods to start the synchronous motor will be discussed from this topic. And next, power equations. So what are the different power equations for the two types of synchronous motors will be discussed in this topic. And operation of synchronous motor when connected to infinite bus power under no load condition and loaded conditions will be studied from this topic. And in loaded conditions, two cases are discussed that is effect of changing excitation with load constant and effect of changing mechanical load with excitation constant. And in this we will also come across the important characteristics like V and inverter V curves. Electrically construction of synchronous motor and alternator is same. So is why they have common topics and uh, those topics you can find in the alternator lecture video. That is construction, armature reaction, production of rotating magnetic field and torque etc. So first topic, differences between alternator and synchronous motor. The first difference to be discussed is about load angle, which is represented with delta. And for alternator, load angle is considered positive and for synchronous motor, it is considered negative. So load angle is the angle between the main field MMF and air gap MMF. And if drops due to armature resistance and leakage reactants are neglected, then delta is the angle between induced CMF and terminal voltage V. And in this case, delta is the angle between back EMF EV and input voltage V. And the point to be discussed about load angle is that for a particular range of delta, operation of alternator will be stable and beyond that value of delta, operation of alternator will be unstable. And coming to the case of synchronous motor, if load on synchronous motor increases, it will run at synchronous speed up to a particular value of load angle. And beyond that value of load angle, synchronous motor simply stops running. As in case of alternator, delta is considered positive. So, if terminal voltage V is taken like that, then induced EMF is said to be leading by an angle delta and in case of synchronous motor if V is the input voltage then E is said to be lagging by an angle delta and in this case E is back EMF and it is represented with EV. So the second point to be discussed here is about E. In case of alternator it is induced EMF that is generated EMF and whereas in this case back EMF EB 
and the third difference to be discussed is about current I, which is outgoing in case of alternator and which is incoming in case of synchronous motor. That is, in case of alternator, current will be delivered and whereas in case of synchronous motor, current is received. So is why in this case, torque can be considered positive and in this case, torque can be considered negative. And the fourth difference is about phase sequence and here about direction of rotation. In case of alternator, the output is AC electrical energy and the preferred phase sequence is RYB. In some applications, it is required to change the phase sequence. Then how to change the phase sequence means we have to change the direction of rotation of rotor. And coming to the case of synchronous motor, output is mechanical energy. So in some applications, it is required to change the direction of rotation. So to change the direction of rotation, what we must do is we must change the input supply phase sequence. Next about damper winding. The main purpose of providing damper windings in alternator or in synchronous motor is to reduce the hunting effect. That is to and fro oscillations of rotor about its synchronous speed. So damper windings will reduce that hunting effect. And apart from reducing the hunting effect, in case of alternator, damper winding also serves other purpose. That is, it reduces the negative sequence currents during short circuits. And in case of synchronous motor, apart from reducing the hunting effect, damper winding also serves other purpose. That is, it provides starting torque. Coming to the case of alternator, during the short circuits, there is a chance of native sequence currents flowing into the machine. So, because of that, rotor will get enormously heated up. So, in order to protect the rotor, damper windings are provided. And those negative sequence currents are made to flow through the damper windings, by which negative sequence currents get reduced, so that rotor is protected from getting heated up by the negative sequence currents. And next about rotating magnetic field and torque. So this topic is already discussed in the armature lecture video and load angle delta is considered as the angle between main field MMF and armature MMF which is represented with delta. So from this armature MMF lags behind main field MMF and the electromagnetic torque developed is opposite direction to the rotation of rotor and now come to the case of synchronous motor and from this main field MMF lags behind armature MMF and the electromagnetic torque direction is in same direction to direction of rotation of rotor. If you need the detailed analysis, go to the lecture video on rotating magnetic field and torque from alternators. And from this, you need to remember these four points. And there is one more topic to be discussed about this, that is conditions for the production of rotating magnetic field. The first condition is current must have time displacement and the second condition is windings that is phases must have space separation let us suppose these are the slots in which the three phases like R by P are placed, let this be the R and let this be the Y and let this be the P. And in opposite slot, we will get the other end of the R phase and the other end of the Y phase and the other end of the B phase. Let the current direction in R phase be dot. So obviously in other conductor of R phase, it will be cross. And here, the two currents in the Y phase and B phase will be in opposite direction to the R. So here dot and dot. 
and now find the resultant MMF due to R by P, R dash, Y dash and V dash. So for that apply Cox rule and here as it is dot that is upwards, so the MMF due to R plus is towards this direction and the MMF due to Y and V will be towards this direction. And now apply here, here cross means MMF due to R dash and uh, this is MMF due to Y dash and this is MMF due to B dash. Now if you observe here, MMFs are equal and opposite to each other so, so that the resultant MMF is zero. So if there is no MMF, there will be no formation of poles. So if there are no poles, there is no case of rotating magnetic field. So here for the production of rotating magnetic field, poles are compulsory and for the poles to form here, phases must have space displacement. And if there is no space displacement like this, there will be no resultant MMF so that there are no poles so that there is no rotating magnetic field. And coming to the case of current, current can be either balanced or unbalanced. If the currents are balanced and having time displacement and uh, if the windings are having space separation, then the poles formed will have definite speed and direction. And if the currents are unbalanced, and the windings are having space separation. In this case also poles will be formed, but they will not have definite speed and direction. The next important difference is about armature reaction. It is defined as the effect of armature flux on main flux. And it is discussed in alternator topic that if this be the induced AMF, then flux will be like this. This is main magnetic field flux and let the terminal voltage be V and consider the case of unity power factor so that current will be in phase with V and because of this current there will be armature flux phi A and observe that here to main flux armature flux is crossing it so is why here the armature reaction is cross magnetizing effect and now come to the case of synchronous motor. If this is the main magnetic field and if this be the back EMF EB and this be the input voltage V and it is known that in case of alternator current is outgoing and in case of synchronous motor current is incoming or you can consider like this here current is upwards so in this case current will be down and here we are considering the case of unity power factor so current will be in phase with V and because of this current there will be armature flux phi A and observe here the to main flux armature flux is crossing it means here armature reaction is cross magnetizing effect so in the case of unity power factor the armature reaction in both the alternator and synchronous motor is cross magnetizing effect now let's discuss the case of JPF lack that is inductive load case. So if this is the induced EMF and this be the main magnetic field and let this be the 10 voltage V as your JPF that is pure inductive load. So current will be lagging to V by an angle 90 degrees. So because of this current there will be armature flux phi A and now observe here that here armature flux is opposing the main flux means it is reducing the main flux which implies armature reaction is dematizing effect. And now come to the case of synchronous motor if this is the back EMF VB and let this be the main magnetic field flux in case of alternator current is towards this direction. So in case of synchronous motor current will be towards this direction. And now because of this current flux will be phi A and observe here that main magnetic field flux and armature flux are aiding each other. Means here armature reaction is magnetizing effect. And now consider the case of 0.8 PF lag means here it is not pure inductive load so 
current will be like this and now current will have two components one along horizontal axis one along vertical axis and because of the current components along the horizontal axis and vertical axis there will be armature flux component along horizontal axis and armature flux component along vertical axis and because of the horizontal component flux there will be demitizing effect and because of the vertical component of armature flux there will be cross mitizing effect so in case of 0.8 we applied there will be two armature reaction effects that is along with demitizing effect there will be cross mitizing effect and coming to the case of synchronous motor for 0.8 we applied here along with mitizing effect there will be cross mitizing effect and let us see the case of ZP of lead means if this is the induced EMF and this be the main magnetic field flux and now because of ZP of lead means pure capacitor load so current will be leading to general voltage V so because of this current there will be armature flux phi A and observe here that now main flux and armature flux of AD which implies armature reaction is magnetizing effect and now come to the case of synchronous motor if this is the back EMF PP and let this be the main flux and this be the input voltage and uh, here current is towards that direction so here current will be towards this direction and because of this there will be armature flux and in this case armature flux is opposing the main flux that implies armature reaction is dematizing effect in case of ZPF fleet. Now consider the 0.8 PF fleet. So with this condition along with matizing effect there will be cross matizing effect. And similarly in case of synchronous motor, along with demitizing effect, there will be cross matizing effect. So these are the important differences between alternator and synchronous motor. And there are other important differences. And those will be discussed at the end of this video on synchronous motor. So now let's move to the introduction. First here we must discuss why synchronous motor is preferred to induction motor. So for high power and low speed applications synchronous motor is advantageous to induction motor so for high power and low speed applications synchronous motor is preferred to induction motor so at same rating for high power and low speed applications if you compare synchronous motor will be less in size less in cost and more in efficiency and other important advantage of synchronous motor is that it can be operated in wide range of power factors and from this that is low speed you must note that synchronous motors are of salient pole type because salient pole type of rotor construction is preferred for low speed applications and cylindrical pole type of rotor construction is preferred for high speed applications as here synchronous motor is advantageous to induction motor for high power and low speed applications means majority of synchronous motors are all of salient pole type and synchronous motor is a constant speed motor that is it runs at synchronous speed and at other than synchronous speed synchronous motor stops running so is why slip of synchronous motor is equal to zero that is slip is said to be zero that is speed regulation is zero so is why the speed versus torque curve will be like this and the point to be noted from this is that as synchronous motor is a constant speed motor it doesn't mean that we can't change its speed we can change its synchronous speed and the only way to change the synchronous speed is to vary its input frequency so that the synchronous speed of synchronous motor will get changed of course synchronous speed can also be changed by changing the number of volts but 
changing poles is the criteria of mechanical design and changing poles is not possible for us. So the only way to change the synchronous speed of synchronous motor is to vary its input supply frequency. Now applications. The important application of synchronous motor is it is used as synchronous condenser to control the reactive power at load side. And second important application it is used in lift irrigations, lift irrigations and used in centrifugal pumps and used in crushers, crushers and blowers, used in steel mills and roller mills and used in exhaust or induced draft fans and etc. So these are the important applications of synchronous motor. Now let's see the advantages of synchronous motor. We have discussed already one important advantage of synchronous motor to induction motor that is at high power low speed applications synchronous motor is advantages to induction motor in terms of size cost and efficiency and the second advantage is it is a constant speed motor and the third most advantage is it can be operated in wide ranges of power factors. Now let's discuss about disadvantage. The main disadvantage of synchronous motor is it is not a self-starting motor. So obviously from the first point you can tell the other disadvantage that is its starting torque is zero. Next one synchronous motor is not a self-starting motor. I will explain it in two ways. For that first it is needed to discuss about the principle of operation of synchronous motor. So simply principle of operation of synchronous motor is here magnetic locking and that I will explain now. For suppose if this is the stator and let the salient pole rotor be this and let the poles formed because of the DC excitation supply be north pole and south pole and because of the input supply let the poles formed here and here be north pole and south pole and we know that like poles will ripple and opposite poles will attract each other as here like poles they will get rippled and as here stator is static part and rotor is moving part which is free to rotate so because of repulsion rotor will get rippled let the repulsion be towards this direction and here this direction and this is the case when input supply is in first half period and in next half cycle of input supply stator poles will change let the poles change due to second half of the input cycle the south pole and north pole and at this position our rotor is here this is north pole and south pole and now observe here that these are unlike poles so that 
they will attract. So the attraction will be towards this direction because rotor is free to move. So like this. And observe that in this case, that is in first half cycle, the direction of rotation is anti-clockwise. In second half cycle, the direction of rotation of rotor is clockwise. Means here bidirectional torque is produced. But it is discussed in rotating magnetic field and torque lecture video that for the rotor to rotate, there must be unidirectional torque. It is bidirectional torque, so the rotor will not rotate. And here you must observe that because of the input supply frequency, the scatter poles will change rapidly and rotor can't respond properly to the change in poles. So as well, rotor will not rotate because it is subjected to torques in both directions, that is bidirectional torque. So it is said that why synchronous motor is not a self-starting means because of the inertia of the rotor. That is because of the inertia of rotor only, it is not able to respond to the rapid change of scatter poles. For one instant, it is subjected to anti-clockwise torque and to the next instant, it is subjected to clockwise torque. As so, as it is rapidly subjected to clockwise and anti-clockwise torques, that is bidirectional torque, rotor can't rotate. And why it can't rotate means because of its inertia. And now let's discuss how we can make the synchronous motor to rotate. That is, we are seeing now how to produce unidirectional torque. For that, consider this be the stator and let this be the input supply and uh, let this be the salient pole rotor and because of the DC excitation, let the poles form here be south pole and north pole and because of the input supply, let these poles form in north pole and south pole and observe here that here the poles are unlike poles means there is a force of attraction so let's consider it to be clockwise and now consider the second instant of supply that is second half cycle of input supply and because of the second half cycle no poles will get changed so this will be south pole and this will be north pole and now if you can make an external arrangement like this that is change of rotor position along with the rapid change of scatter poles then observe here as here now attraction so is one rotor rotation will be clockwise so in both instances the torque produced is clockwise so is over here a unidirectional torque is produced as here unidirectional torque is produced it can be said that rotor will rotate and why it is rotating means because of magnetic clocking so is why the principle of operation of synchronous motor is said to be magnetic clocking now let's see the other way of explanation for that you need to know about the principle of operation of induction motor. Constructional lean, if you see, the scatter construction of induction motor and synchronous motor are same. And uh, let this be the rotor of induction motor and let this be the rotor of salient pole type synchronous motor. And why the synchronous motor is not self starting means we discussed it is because of the rotor inertia. But induction motor rotor is also having inertia. Then it should also be not a self starting motor. But induction motor is a self starting motor. Why? Why means in case of induction motor, the relative speed between stator rotating magnetic field and rotor rotating magnetic field that is at starting is zero because of the relative speed between the scatter rotating magnetic field and rotor rotating magnetic field induction motor is a self-starting motor so to start the synchronous motor we need to make the relative speed between the scatter magnetic field and rotor magnetic field to zero and for that what we must do is by some external arrangement we need to make the rotor to rotate at the speed of synchronous speed so if we can make the rotor to rotate at the speed of synchronous speed, then the rotating magnetic field of stator because of input supply is ns and because of the external arrangement, the rotor speed is ns. So as here ns and as here ns, so relative speed is here zero. So that we can say synchronous motor started. So by this way, we can start the synchronous motor and the different starting methods to start this synchronous motor will be discussed in the next topic. 
and uh, if this is confusing there is other simple way to understand that is we know that why synchronous motor is not self starting means because of the energy of rotor so let us suppose this is the fixed body which is on the ground surface and to move this we need to give a force and once it is set into motion to move it further we need to apply only little force which means when the body is in fixed state its inertia is more and once the body is set to rotating state its inertia will reduce so is why a little force is enough to move the body further and the same concept applies here and because of the rotor inertia synchronous motor is not self starting so to make it start we need to reduce its inertia to zero so how to reduce the inertia of rotor to zero means by rotating it and by rotating the rotor of synchronous motor to synchronous speed its inertia will be almost close to zero so once the inertia is zero the stator magnetic poles and rotor magnetic poles are magnetically locked and once they are magnetically locked synchronous motor will continue to rotate at synchronous speed and synchronous motor will continue to rotate at synchronous speed until its load angle is not beyond a particular value when the load on synchronous motor is increasing. 